Let's check out the political temperature in the villages this week. To the editor, it was so nice to see the Harris Walsh golf cart parade in the villages, peacefully delivering their ballots and not one vile negative word spoken. No one leaning out of their golf cart yelling white power as we saw in a previous Trump parade. Hmm, what was that like seven, eight years ago? I'm sorry, you can't blame Trump for somebody else being stupid. Compare that to Eric and Laura Trump's recent boat rally in Jupiter Inlet. Boats were festooned with swastikas and participants yelling hate speech against their fellow Americans, immigrants, and anyone else they did not agree with. Clearly, we know who the true patriots are. And it isn't the fascist in the Trump boat parade. The Harris Waltz voters who legally and without malice turned in their ballots are the true patriots. Sent in by Diane Yates, the village of Virginia Trace. Hey, Google, what's the meaning of patriot? Here's the definition of patriot. A person who vigorously supports their country and is prepared to defend it against enemies or detractors. Just saying. And here's another letter to the editor from a, another Trump hater. To the editor. I just read Ray Dubois' letter to the editor. For those of you who haven't read it, let me summarize. Ray claims that comments from Trump supporters are insulting, arrogant, inaccurate, or just plain stupid. And always inaccurate, demeaning, insulting, and just downright rude. He then gives where he has lived ancestry, education, and life history in an attempt to show how educated and virtuous he is as if that gives him standing to demean Trump supporters. It implies he thinks that opinions that differ from his are not worthy of consideration. Hence, you can't fix stupid. Line at the end of the rant. It's absurd to complain what the other side does, then do it yourself. Sent in by Mike Norberg from the village of Glenbrook. He's right. I see hypocrisy on this election from both sides. That is just crazy. It's nuts. I sit and watch the news some nights. I flip around from one news to another to hear how the news is really slanted nowadays. And it's almost comical. Now, all the things that I've read this week to kind of get ready for this short little video of the political temperature here in the villages, a retirement community where people of age have lived on this earth a long time, seen a lot, you think nothing would face them anymore, and they would just take it all in stride, but it's amazing. Here's a little bit of a letter of common sense, I guess I should say. The title of the letter is Fact Checking Needed as Election Nears. As this important election nears, I observe with interest the many opinions expressed by writers in this opinion section. Unfortunately, I am witnessing the extreme polarization of our population with doomsday predictions from both sides as to what will happen if the other side wins. Without a single vote yet cast, we have people alleging the election has been rigged. Much of this rhetoric seems to be coming from individuals being influenced by both news and social media sources. I'm always amazed about how many people are getting their political information from a Chinese-owned company called TikTok. As a lifelong information professional with a career in the library field, I would caution people to really return to a basic understanding of fact versus opinion. This is a basic reading skill taught as a fourth grader. A fact is a thing that is known or proved to be true. An opinion is a view or judgment formed about something not necessarily based on fact or knowledge. A recent letter writer suggested readers should turn to Newsmax, Bill O'Reilly, and Mark Levin on Fox for no spin truth. These news sources have been judged to be biased according to the media bias chart created by AdFonts. Opinions are not the same as news. Problem ensues when people only read or view opinions that confirm their existing beliefs. To truly understand the world in which we live, an individual needs to incorporate information from multiple perspectives. If you lean conservative, turn on MSNBC occasionally to hear the other side, and progressives, tune into Fox once in a while for another perspective. It certainly may change your beliefs, but it may help you better understand where your neighbor or friends on the other side is coming from. 
As the political advertising and reporting continues to heat up, remember to question and fact check. Some places to do so are politifacts.com, factcheck.org, and Snopes, S-N-O-P-E-S. Please don't repeat or share unchecked information. We are all citizens of this great nation. Thankfully, our forefathers created a government with checks and balances. The world will not end if the election doesn't go your way. Let's assume we can once again witness a peaceful transition and leadership and find ways to move forward in a bipartisan way. That's said by Gail Formanak. She is a resident of the village of Hemingway. Thanks, Gail. Nice article with a lot of common sense in it. And I've always said, I think, in this election year, with all the rhetoric going on, and you see it on the news all the time, it's just one thing after another. None of it has been proven true, but they've got most of America on one side or the other brainwashed. We're all brainwashed. We believe what we know is exactly right, don't we? I believe everything I know is exactly right, and so do you. And the truth of it is, none of us are exactly right. None of us. I'm going to say it again. I've said it before. Just vote your heart, vote your mind. Don't vote because your grandfather voted that way. And don't vote because I hate this guy. Or don't vote because I think it'd be great to have the first woman. And that seems to be what's going on. They don't want to vote for Trump because they hate him. They'll vote for anybody just because they hate him. I don't see any evidence at all that supports that kind of hate for the leader of a country in the world. Just like her. I don't see any evidence in leadership there at all. But they'll vote for because it's a female. I don't see where that has anything to do with leadership of the world's strongest nation at all. Just vote for what's best for the country. Don't vote all blue because that's what your family's always done. Don't vote all red because that's what your family's done. You know, years ago, there was a thing called a split ticket. And I've done that many times. I'm not Republican. I'm not Democrat. I'm, I guess you'd call it independent. I vote who I think is best for the nation, not for me and not for you. I vote for what's best for the nation. And we all know what we need. We need secure borders. We need jobs. We need somebody to protect our way of life. And that's the way it's got to be. There's a lot of problems in this country right now. Three hurricanes, all this damage, insurance rates are nuts. There's a lot of misinformation going on from both sides. It ain't all one-sided here. So just vote your heart, vote your mind. When you vote, I want everybody to stop for a second before you fill that card out or drop it off. What do you want to leave your kids and your grandkids behind? Do you want to leave in a nation that's very good, very prosperous for them and their future? I do. Or do you want to leave in a nation that's just a mess like it is right now? And it's a mess. In my lifetime, 73 years on this earth, I have never seen this nation like this. And I don't know what the fix is, but I know that everything that goes wrong in our nation, the bottom line is, it's our fault. It's not any president's fault. It's not any senator's fault. We're the ones that give them the power to do what they're doing. And we're saying it's okay when we reelect those people. So with that, I just want to say, God bless America and God bless the American voter.